Hello, Michael here with another Redshift tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at PaintFX Grass uh, for use with Redshift in Maya. I already looked at PaintFX Trees last week, so if you haven't caught that one, check it out. Um, it's got some uh, specific tips for using trees. It's The method for grass is a little bit similar, but I'm going to show you a couple of extra bonus things uh, that might help you out. So you'll notice I'm in Photoshop, um, that's because I'm going to create a texture and show you how to do it for grass, it's really easy. So I'm just going to make a square texture, it's going to be 2000 by 2000. Um, I'll save it at a lower resolution, but just at this, at this point I'll keep it high poly, or high resolution. So the first thing you're going to want to do is select two colors, a light green color, we're going to go green obviously because it's grass, so lightest green, lightest green color, uh, don't forget to vary your hue a little bit and um, on your secondary color a darker green color um, as saturated or desaturated as you like uh, then we're going to do a uh, filter uh, render fibers and you'll see in the preview that you get this sort of situation happening and you can um, adjust it as you would like um, probably sort of in the low range so you get a good balance between light and dark is where i would start um, and then strength I would probably keep sort of fairly low and we'll click OK. So then we get this and this doesn't look like grass yet. Uh, next we're going to go to filter again, we're going to go to blur and we're going to do a motion blur. And you'll see that we get this um, up and down blur uh, which you can change to be any direction but we want it to be 90 degrees so it's going straight up and down and then you just need to adjust your distance till you get basically some nice stripes like so. Next we're going to create a new layer and we're going to uh, swap to our dark color. I think I might make it even darker. I'm going to use a gradient fill and make sure that you've got it going from your color to um, transparent and then we'll just click and hold shift and move it up like that and that doesn't look particularly good so we'll go to our blending mode and we'll select multiply so we get a bit more darkness um, accentuating the darker parts of our texture. We're going to do the same again but this time with our lighter color and I'll just make it even lighter again and same thing fill but from the top and this time we're going to use soft light. So you can blend these as much as you like. Um, I might even actually make that light fill a little bit longer. Yeah, something like that. Just so you get the stripes um, to look sort of as vibrant as possible, essentially. And if you're happy with that, you, you may need to go back and forth between Photoshop and Maya a little bit to get this to look exactly how you like, but as is, this will pretty much do it, I think. So what I'm going to do is hold down Control, Alt, Shift, and S. Um, the only reason I'm doing this is because I want to change the file size while I'm saving. I'm going to make the file size, it doesn't need to be big because uh, depending on how close you're planning on being to your grass, uh, in this case it's going to be sort of a medium shot so you're not going to really see it, it's going to sort of zhuzh up the shot a little bit, but um, you don't have to go too crazy. You, should, you could go like 256, you could go 512. Uh, I'm going to go 256 just to keep it a little bit lower on the processing end of things. Uh, textures do uh, slow down your render time, they're one of the bigger impacts on render time, so uh, keep that in mind. I'm going to save that out, I'm going to call it grass texture one and save it to my project file. Then we're going to jump into Maya. All right, so here in Maya, let's create a very simple field by making a plane. We'll scale that up and we'll go to the channel box editor, um, polyplane and and increase its subdivisions uh, to uh, probably 40 by 40. That looks good. Next we'll go to vertex selection. Um, we'll hit B to go to um, soft select and if you hold down B and left click and drag you can increase or decrease the brush size. So I'm going to make it fairly big for this first one and just create some rolling hills to work with. Do it again, change my brush size and let's do two more. Alright so we have a lovely rolling field now. You can um, hit three to uh, smooth subdivide that. I'm going to turn off the grid so you can see it um, and maybe turn on wireframe. So yeah, that looks, you know, work with what you've got. Um, decide on what you want your scene to look like, but this is just going to be an example. We're going to go to modify, uh, sorry, we're going to go to windows and go to general editors and visor. 
Then we have the visor here. We'll go to grasses and we will select uh, grass wind wide. Some of these uh, textures do, uh, some of these paint effects use texture nodes. If you want to do with, with the, one of the texture nodes, one I think maybe the AstroTurf or something does, um, check out the paint effects tree tutorial if you want to learn how to set that up. It's the same as setting up the leaves in the tree tutorial. But for this grass one, we're going to use grass wind wide and you get some nice wide grass. Actually, before I do that, I need to select this mesh and go to generate and make paintable. So now we can use our paint effects brush on this. So select the grass, decide on what size you want it. Um, might make this a bit bigger. I'm just going to draw out some grass and as you can see it's going up over the hills, something like that. Now because once we um, convert this to polygons we won't be able to edit it anymore. We're just going to quickly block out what we want it to look like. So we'll go in and um, we're going to change the brush profile under the attribute editor and uh, brush, brush width to be a bit wider. Yeah, um, and I might increase that density. Now you, uh, once you convert this to polygons, it's going to obviously get quite heavy because um, these are all going to be polygons instead of just nerves. So keep that in mind. Um, you could you could uh, export them as a archive and then re-import them and it'll be a lot lighter on the scene. Um, you might want to sort of work your grass out in patches if you're doing that just to make it a little bit easier to work with. But you know this this looks pretty good. Um, I could go a lot further and sort of finesse it but uh, I think this will do for now. Alright so now we're going to convert this to polygons. So select your mesh, go to modify, uh, convert and paint effects to polygons. Now this happens sometimes, um, and I'm not 100% certain why, it might be something to do with my stroke, uh, but I get the feeling it's also probably something to do with the sample density because um, if I change the sample density to be 1.0, it follows its initial brush shape. So that's something worth keeping in mind. Um, I haven't figured out a good workaround for this, so if you if you do know what causes this and how to avoid it, please let me know in the comments and I will pass it on to the rest of the viewers. But um, this is really about rendering it up, so we can work with this still. If you if you maybe painted in narrower lines um, for your brush in the first place, you might not run into this issue so much. Um, but you still have a little bit of control, obviously, over your paint effects. Um, you can still adjust uh, the things things like the uh, your brush width will affect it somewhat, um, you know, other twists and things like that, but uh, I'm not going to get into that. We're more concerned with rendering in this one. So with uh, your grass selected, we'll open up the Hypershade Editor and I'll just map that out so we can see what's happening. So we want to plug this into a Redshift shader, so we'll just hit Tab and hit Redshift Material and get a Redshift Material. And uh, you'll see that we've got this ramp here. You could use this if you wanted to, just plug that into your uh, diffuse color, but we have already got a texture painted up, so why don't we use that? Uh, so hit tab, file, uh, texture is what we want. And we'll just run the out color into the diffuse channel and we'll open up our image, which is grass, grass texture one. And we will also, if we hit our, um, if we grab our um, material node, hit 3 and type in trans. We want to grab the translucent color and plug this into that as well. This can um, just make it look a little bit nicer um, if you just add a bit of translucency to your to your grass. This will increase your render time a bit so just use this as necessary. Uh, you may or may not need to use it. Also um, look at your specularity, make sure it's sort of a little bit lower and a little bit rougher and maybe a little bit of roughness on your um, on your diffuse channel as well. And I'll just turn that off. Oh yes, and I also need to assign the shader to it. So we'll uh, select our grass, right click and hold and assign material to selection. So as you can see, it's lighter towards the uh, top of the grass and, um, and darker towards the bottom as it is in the texture. And if I get really close, you can see that it's got that um, texture. And I probably could have used a, um, I probably could have, with this Photoshop material, 
just uh, control E to merge it all and then uh, duplicate that layer so I can unlock it I hate that thing about Photoshop all right I hit control T and then I could make it wider as necessary and then save it out again but I'll just roll with what I've got for this example so we've got this grass here I'll uh, we'll chuck a light in redshift lights and a dome light and uh, we'll quickly render that all right so you get some you know fairly convincing grass obviously it's, a, it's not dense enough at the moment but um, I'd go in and further work that out um, I'd probably make my brush a little bit smaller and go in and paint a lot more uh, grass but uh, you get the idea on how to work that and also if we zoom in here and uh, I PR that again uh, you can see the texture you just see the texture if I zoom in yeah so if you've got some closer up shots of your grass that may be worth doing uh, if you've got wider shots of your grass or, or actually maybe even for closer shots you may want to also add tessellation to it so if you select your grass uh, go to the uh, grass main shape node go to redshift and enable tessellation uh, this will basically subdivide uh, give smooth subdivisions to your um, geometry which will increase your render time quite a bit because you've got a lot of you know you got uh, 125,000 faces there so uh, use this sparingly you may want to reduce the poly count of your um, of your grass before you get in and do that um, this might be a little bit too heavy um, it sort of depends on your system this might be better to do with the node based ones rather than the tube based ones um, so when you're doing the sprite based sort of ones uh, like I was saying earlier uh, but you can see it's rendering in now and this will just make your grass look a little bit softer um, yeah so that is pretty much all there is to it and uh, there's probably a bit more vis dev you'd want to do obviously to get your grass to look good but that's sort of the way I'd go about rendering it and as I said um, you'd probably want to archive this out maybe into smaller patches so you can deal with it a bit easier or you could just uh, select your grass and add it to a different layer um, and then that way you can make it visible or not uh, which will be easier once you're working in Maya so yeah, that's it for this one if you've got any questions uh, make sure you leave them in the comments and I'll try and get back to you um, and if you liked the video make sure you click the like button so other people can find it if you haven't already make sure you're subscribed because I'm doing a couple of videos a week and if you want to make up stay up to date with that make sure you're following on the Facebook page link in the description that's it for now though thank you very much for watching and happy rendering